Okay. The today's topic is the scanning crop microscope and uh, AFM uh, atomic pose uh, microscopes. In last class, we talked about the electron microscopes where we try to understand some of the fundamentals like uh, what is the meaning of scanning electron microscope and how it works, as well as the transmission electron microscope. And the next category of microscopes is the scanning probe microscopes. Uh, it is very clear from the name that the scanning means a surface whose scan or a probe or a material with, uh, which is scanned by the probe thoroughly and give the information about the complete layer of the sample. The scanning probe microscopes, um, here the most important term is the scanning and the second one is the uh, probe. What is the meaning of probe? Probe is a very uh, thin needle which is used and it may be in the size of few uh, microns or nanometers. So, and scanning means we scan the surface through the different technologies or different techniques. Uh, in scanning probe microscopes, as sharp metal tips can uh, approach the sample surface in a raster mode to produce the image of samples at the subatomic sub resolution level. It's very clear that it's simply scan the surface of the material and give the information about the top layer or topmost surface of the material. Remember one thing, yesterday we talked about the different interactions of the electron with the material and what we found is the backscattered electron and then secondary electrons, over electron and characteristic arrays. These are the different possible ways of interaction of the electron. So here also we need to understand that how the electrons from probe and sample are interacting and they produce some effect. The different type of SPM, the most important one which we will discuss the SPM scanning probe microscope, then we will talk about the scanning primary microscope. Next one is the AFM which is slightly different from the scanning probe microscope where the principle is the constant force, whereas in these cases we talk about the current. Magnetic force microscope, scanning here from microscope, all these are based on the phenomena of the different forces. Now when we talk about the scanning, what is the meaning of scanning? First of all, we need to understand that the lowermost surface, this is the sample which is prepared maybe in the form of the nanomaterials, nanoparticles, nanoclusters and this is the tip. Tip which also have the single atom structure or single electron structures. Now when we talk about the scanning, uh, the scanning turning microscope is an electron microscope that uses a single atom tape to attain atomic resolutions. So this is the tape, just look over here, 4, 3, 2, 1. The last one is the single atom of the material and when an electron tunnels through this atom to sample or sample to this, that what we say, the moment or tunneling of an electron from tip to sample or sample to tip is responsible for the information obtained by this method or by this microscopes. Now this one is giving some more information about that how a tape scan the surface of the material. If you look over here, it goes like this, down, up, down, like this. And this type of scan is known as raster scan. Now what is the meaning of raster scanning? Raster scanning is the scanning of the sample atom by atom in two ways, one it starts from one atom to another. So this is the slow scan which is uh, which is where we got the information about the sample. Whereas scan from this layer to this or this to this is known as a fast scan where we will not get any information about the sample and if we move from here to here and after this again we we'll go down then again fast scan, go up, straight like this, this type of scan gives the complete information about the sample and the most important thing is that the step size of this, this type of scanners is the intra-atomic distance and if intra-atomic distance is low which is in the order of the scanning mode then it gives the best information about the samples in STM and AFM scanning probe and last time principles are used scanning probe is very easy to understand that a probe which is used to scan the sample and most of the time it is the single atom probes and AFM where we talk about the change in the force of the material and the different type of forces, not only the force that is a, like electrostatic force, it is a magnetostatic force or some other forces which are responsible for the information about the sample. Probe is a fine metal tip of approximately 10 nanometer diameter and made up of silicon, platinum, rubidium, rhodium, platinum, iridium or etc. These are the different alloys which are used to prepare a sample tip, single tip of the or single probe. 
Even diamond cotton tips are also used. Tips are obtained by etching a fine metal wire in some suitable chemical or lithographic area. Now, how you obtain the tip? Simply we etch the symbol, etch the metal with the all these materials like silicon or alloys or lithographic area. And assume the tip is directly mounted on some specially designed piezo drives. Uh, remember one thing: the piezo drives are used to measure this. Even a small change observed or a small deflection observed in case of <coughs> the movement of electron, the turning of electron from uh, sample to tip or tip to sample. For AFM, tip is mounted on a cantilever which is then mounted on a piece of drive. Now, what is the role of piece of drive? The function of piece of drive is to scan the sample surface to be imaged. The space or the sorry, the uh, sample or the surface which is required to scan, which uh, where we need to get the information about the sample is scanned through the piece of drive and we will get the information about the sample in the form of image of the complete surface. The material like lead, zirconium, titanium, which is a well known PJT, but the quartz also known as a piezoelectric material, are not to be piezo crystals. SPM skin are made over a few nanometer to 100 micrometer in horizontal plane. This is the horizontal plane where we try to get the information about the sample and about few nanometer to 10 micrometer in the vertical plane. So this is the vertical plane. This is what we think of vertical plane and this is the horizontal plane. So in both the directions, we will try to get the information through the different type of scannings. <coughs> Scanning is done by moving the tip on a line and the moving it to the next, one line to another line. Digital images are collected at several points per line as the computer language or the information taken from the sample in these different image functions. Now what is the meaning of tunneling? Because in the last topic we talk about the STM, as you will scanning tunneling microscope. When we use the word tunneling, then we need to understand what is the meaning of tunneling. If you look on this diagram, we just assume there are two metals. Here, two metals means one is the uh, tip and other one is the tip or say crop and the second one is the sample. Suppose we are having two uh, metals which are having two different Fermi level as well as different Fermi functions. Uh, sorry, Fermi functions. Now, when the distance is greater than 10 nanometer, the distance is distance between two metals is greater than 10 nanometer, then there may be some possibility that an electron transit from one atom to another, sorry, one metal to another. But if the distance is less than 10 nanometer, then make sure that yes, there is possibility of tunnel, tunneling of an electron from one atom to another, means one metal to another. And in result, I'll get some current in the circuit and if you look on this, it looks like that if the electron is going from metal 1 to metal 2, then this metal 1 is behaving as a negative electron and metal 2 is behaving as a positive electron. And in this case, we will get the sun current due to tunneling of the electron from one level to another. And this is what the principle of STM scaling tunneling microscope, where we talk about the transition or the tunneling of the electron. Now, this is what we said in the last diagram, there are two metals at a small distance, but the distance is larger than 10 nanometers. Uh, from each other, even though the Fermi levels do not coincide, transfer of electrons from one metal to other is not possible. To transfer the electron from one metal to other, it is necessary for the electron in the vicinity of Fermi levels to overcome the potential barrier. As we know, in, even in case of semiconductor materials, like if you talk about the PN junction diode, if we will not bias the circuit, we will not bias the PN junction, then it is not possible to get any signal because there is a um, potential barrier formed between PN and type, which is approximately 0.7 or 1.1 electron volt. That potential barrier is overcome by the biasing voltages, which is applied in the form of either forward bias and reverse bias. Similarly, here also we need to give some energy so that the uh, electron tunnel through one metal to another. To transfer the electron from one metal to another, it is necessary for the electron in the vicinity of the Fermi levels to overcome the potential barrier formed between two levels. The work function of the material. At room temperature, for metal it is in the range of 2 to 5 electron volt. Now if the distance is reduced to less than 10 nanometer, means the distance is smaller than 10 nanometer, in that case electron can be transferred from one metal to other to establish a common Fermi level without going over to the potential barrier. It means we are not talking about the rising of the uh, electron to a higher level. Here it is very simple to say that the electron tunnel through the medium one or the metal one to metal two. Even it doesn't 
or it do not overcome the potential of the metal 1 or set the potential of metal 2. At a short distance of few nanometers, the wave function of electrons from either side decay into the other metal. The electron can tunnel through the barrier. This causes the Fermi level of the two metals to coincide with a small contact potential. This phenomena I will explain later in the time with the diagrams that how the wave function tunnel from one metal to another or one medium to another. <coughs> now, when we say the electrons are tunneling from M1 to M2 or M2 to M1, then what will happen? Thus the beta diet is reduced, the, however it is still last for the electron to overcome it. Once the Fermi level coincides, the electron cannot flow from one metal to other. However, by rising the Fermi level of one metal with respect to other. If you look at this diagram, if the Fermi level of this element, this metal is right by very small energy difference, then the electron may transit from this metal to this. And this is what the basic concept of the tunneling. However, by rising the Fermi level of one metal with respect to other electrons can tunnel from one metal to other, and this is what the meaning of tunneling for the scanning and tunneling microscope. Fermi level position can be altered by applying a small voltage which is less than the work function of the metals between two metals. The Fermi level of M1 can be raised with respect to M2 by connecting the negative terminal of the power supply to M1 and positive to M2. This is what I already explained in the data. Now, in an STM, the tip potential is not negative. Therefore, its Fermi level is less and the electron flows from tip to the center. Now, earlier also said that the complete explanation about working of STM is based on how electron is transiting or transmitting or tunneling from tip to sample or sample to tip. So here, whatever we explained in last diagram is M1 and M2. So let's say M1 is the tip of the sample and uh, tip of the probe and M2 is the second uh, surface of the material or surface of the sample which is prepared. Then in that case the electron is transmitting from M1 to M2. Similarly here also the electron is tunneling from metal tip to the sample and in this other sample. It is also possible if you want you can raise the from the level of the M2 and in that case the electron is transiting or tunneling from M2 to M1. So it is also to rise, possible to raise the Fermi level of the sample higher than that of tip so that electron flows from sample to tip. Now, how to measure the things, how to understand the working of this microscope. Thus by measuring the current from tip to sample became pro, uh, became pro unoccupied states or empty energy levels of the sample. By simply measuring the current flown in the, uh, through the piezoelectric drive, we can measure or we can identify the unoccupied and occupied states of the given sample. And we are trying to get the information about the sample only. The electrons below the Fermi level flow towards it, therefore one can know about occupied states in the sample. Thus the STM is capable of performing even the spectroscopy of the occupied and occupied and unoccupied levels. It means we are just capable to find out that which state of the material is occupied and unoccupied. It's just like what we say in case of uh, uh, electronic configuration by looking at the atomic number we can identify the k elemental fillings. Similarly here also we try to understand that by STM we can find out the occupied and unoccupied states. The next one is the quantum tunneling. Because in the last part we every time we talk about the tunneling, what is the meaning of tunneling, how electron tunnels from tip to sample or sample to tip. So those things are explained in easier way by the basic phenomenon of the quantum tunneling which we already discussed in earlier part. Suppose this is the wave function, suppose this is the wave or a particle whose energy is less than the height of the potential barrier. It is also known by the name of rectangular potential barrier. So classically, or by classical wave mechanics, simply say the electron cannot find in this region or even in this region. Why? Because the energy of the electron is less than the height of the potential barrier. And in result, we simply say the transition probability or transmission probability in region 3 is almost zero. <coughs> Classically, when an object hits the potential that it doesn't have the enough energy to pass, it will never go through that potential wall. It always bounces back. In English, if you throw a ball at a wall, it will bounce back to at you, just like this one. When it hits to this surface, since its energy is less than this energy of the barrier, it rebound and return back to the same surfaces or same metal. But what quantum mechanics is? According to quantum mechanics, 
the wave function which is hitting to the surface, there is some possibility that it goes down and ultimately you may found that the electron or its wave function is present in the third region and if it is present in third region, then we say the electron is tunneled through the rectangular potential area. In quantum mechanics, when a particle has a potential that it doesn't have enough energy to pass, when inside the square well, the wave function dies off exponentially. This is already it is a part of our review of quantum mechanics that we discussed at the time. In this reason, the wave function is written as some constant e is to the power minus alpha x. So it means it is exponentially decay while passing from one medium to another in state potential also that its amplitude drastically decreases when it tunnels through one medium. If the wave is shortened enough, there will be a noticeable probability of finding the particle on the other side and this is what we have to discuss. The finite square wave potential is a good approximation of looking at the electron on conducting slab with a gap between them. This is explains everything about it. Now, we will just try to understand through the graph, more graphs of tunneling, NR is the probability of finding of an electron and VR is the potential. This is the explanation for the first reason. Now, when we talk about atom to atom. This is the field state of the electron and this is the empty state of the atom. Now when we talk about the tunneling, this is the reason which is common to empty state and field state and this state represents that there is possibility of tunneling of that electron from one level to another. Similarly, we can talk about the, <coughs> the quantum mechanical tunneling through the chronic tunneling model or different ways. Now earlier we derived some relation for the quantum mechanical tunneling and rectangular potential barrier where we found that psi is equal to psi naught e raised to power minus k d just like psi is equal to d raised to power minus alpha x where alpha is given by that expression. So the probability of finding an electron after a barrier of width d when it grows the reason will get t which is known as a transmission probability which is we calculated 16 e v naught minus e upon v naught square into e raised to the power minus 2 alpha e. Here it is written as k, so I write it again. So it is exponentially decaying. The first term is the function of the voltage. Voltage of the potential barrier v naught and e is the energy of the particle. And here e raised to the power minus 2 k d. d. So I will just rewrite it also in the form of d. d is the width of potential barrier alpha or k is a constant which is given by the expression root 2m phi minus e upon h cross where phi is the potential barrier or height of the potential barrier which may be written phi over because in our case we are talking about the two wave functions. Now when you look on the formula the transmission probability is proportional to e raised to the power minus 2 kd that means it is all about the change in k or d will affect the transmission probability strongly. Now plugging in type of values for and t and phi where phi is the average work function of the t and the sample when t changes by 1 angstrom the current changes by a factor of 10. This is the most important part of this that if this d changes by 1 angstrom then the current which is passed through the metal amp 1 and 2 or tip and sample is changed by a factor of 10 and that is the most important thing. So when we talk about a material the variations must be small. So if you bring that to and take close to the surface you can create a tunneling current even though there is a break in the circuit. In that case you get some tunneling current and by measuring that tunneling current you can get the information about the sample. The size of the gap in practice is on the order of a couple of angstrom which we will discuss as a 10 nanometer or maybe something bigger than the 10 nanometers. As you can see the current is very sensitive to the gap distance. Gap distance means we just talk about the metal angle and angle. If the distance is greater than 10, 10 nanometer, we don't get any tunneling. But if it is less than that, then we got the tunneling. This is another way of understanding the quantum tunneling. <coughs> the second group shows how is recess by the about two atoms and thus carries about a million times less current. That is why we want such a fine tip if we can get a single atom at the rate, just like this one. This is also like this, but the current flow through this one is much much smaller than the current of this because the width even if you talk about the one angstrom shift in the width it creates a large difference in the current so if in any case if we have the 
single atom team, then we will get the best information about the sample. The vast majority of the current will run through it and thus gives us the atomic resolution. Now the STM can be run through two modes, one is the constant current mode and second one is the constant height mode. When we say constant current mode, means this is the tip and the path of tip is changing according to the specimen which is present. When the constant height, if you look over here, the constant height of the tip from the center, if this is the this, that we say it is a constantly moving on the constant surface. So in that case we say it is a constant height mode and in this case it is moving with the constant current mode. So here like this and so depend on the specimen surface and the position of tape which is a constant current. In this mode of operation a sharp tape is moved on the sample surface such that the current between the tip and sample remains constant. And if the current remains constant then the tip must move from uh, some sides say H1 to S2, S2 to S3 and so on. In order to maintain, uh, maintain the constant current between the tip and the sample distance between tip and the corrugation also needs to be kept constant. Thus the tip has to follow the atom contours by successively scanning the desired sample area and the rational what profile of surface atom can be general, uh, generated as an image. So this is all about constant current mode. Second one is the constant height mode. In this mode of the operation, the tip is moved on the sample surface at a constant height which is greater than 0.5 nanometer. <coughs> surface profile is constructed from the observed variation in the terminal current by using the relation between current and distance and in result we got an image which gives the information about the surface. So here the variation of current is the tip scales the desired area of the sample surface. The constant height mode versus constant current mode, some applications or some advantages of one over another. In case of constant high mode, it can be moved faster on the sample surface as there is no necessity of feedback circuit because we don't want any feedback circuit, means we don't want any additional current. We just scan through the thoroughly the surface with the constant height between the sample and the tip. In the constant current mode, the contact with the sample can damage the tape because here we are talking about the constant current, so it is required to move the tape like this. May it touch to the sample and in result it damages the tape because tape and uh, of the probe is a few uh, nanometers only, and there is a single atom tape, so it may be damaged due to the sample. The next class of the microscopes are the atomic force microscope, and last of it we talk about the. <coughs> Scanning electron microscope, then we talk about the scanning uh, tunneling microscope and scanning probe microscope. The same category or the category of microscope which belongs with the scanning probe microscope is known as atomic force microscope. The only difference which is observed in scanning probe microscope and atomic force microscope is in case of scanning probe microscope, we generally talk about the constant currents, whereas in case of atomic force microscope we we'll talk about the constant force. Now we need to understand what is the meaning of force and what are the different types of force. So if you look at the formula, there are two parts. One is A by A R or X, R K minus V by R Y, R K. If you look on the first term, it is the positive and the positive terms represent the repulsive force between two atoms and this negative term represents the repulsive term. When you say, sorry, it is the attractive force. It represents force of attraction and this represents the force of repulsion. Even from the Coulomb's law, if we recall F is equal to K Q1 Q2 upon R square, if both are positive, I will get the positive, which is repulsive. If both are negative, I get positive, which is the repulsive force. But one is positive, other one is negative, then I get the negative. So the negative, negative sign in a force term represents the attractive force between two or more atoms. So here we talk about atomic force microscope in detail. Uh, the AFM was governed by G. Benning and uh, C. Gabber. The limitation of STM is that it requires the sample to be conductor or at least the semiconductor because there we are looking for the transition or tunneling of electron from tip to sample or sample to tip. And if you require the type of tunneling, then we must have either conductor or semiconductor. When two atoms are close to each other, there are attractive and repulsive forces between them which depends upon distance of their separation which is given by this formula. If the separation is small, say R is very small, in that case this term dominates. If R, R is very large, then this term dominates. It means simply when we talk about the large distances, 
the attractive force is dominating and for short distances the repulsive force is dominating. Whereas is the resultant force between two atoms A, B, X, Y are the constraints and R is the distance between two atoms and R is the unit vector along the line joining the two atoms. The first term is the repulsive force and the second term is the attractive force. Now what is the principle of AFM? Nothing to worry about it if we look on this diagram. Till here the force is positive, it means we are looking for something which is having the attractive force and from here, here onwards it is negative which represents the repulsive force means repulsive force is the force short, short distances sorry, attractive force which is a non-contact mode and for the positive force we will say it is repulsive and it is in contact mode contact means the sample is in contact with the tape or vice versa energy U and force uh, F and the relation between energy and F is given by F is equal to minus T U by D X is the technique we observe over here the defense sample is a function of distance z. The force is the derivative of the energy. It is attractive at large distances for the word forces in non-contact mode or in case of attractive forces. Whereas in case of repulsive force or short distance forces, it is the electrostatic repulsive forces. And when we say it is the electrostatic repulsive forces, the AF1 is known by the name of uh, electro electrostatic force or electric force microscopy. But it becomes highly repulsive when the electrode, electron cloud of tape and sample overlap or the repulsive or contact mode and in that case the device which is used from AFM family is known as electrostatic force microscopy or electric force microscopy. In AFM, AFM the force is kept constant while in STM the current is kept constant which I already explained. Now what is the working concept of the AFM? The physical parameter prop is a force resulting from different interactions means the interaction between the tip electron and the sample. When I say tip electron and sample, this interaction may be mechanical, may be electrostatic, may be magnetostatic or magnetic. When you say it's a magnetic type of interaction, then we say it's a magnetic force microscope. When it is an electrostatic interaction, then we say it's an electrostatic force microscopy. And if it is physical, then we say it is atomic force microscopy. The origin of these interactions can be ionic repulsions, first one, repulsive forces, electrostatic. Water wall forces, capillary, electrostatic, magnetic, or any other type of interaction between the tip and tip and the sample. Thus, an IFM image is generated by recording the force changes as the probe is scanned in the x and y direction. It's very easy to understand, absolutely similar to the scanning electron microscope. In AFM, image is generated by force changes to the surface. While the scanning of the surface of the sample, it gives the information about the in, uh, sample. The sample is mounted on a piezoelectric scanner which ensures three dimensional positioning with high resolution and the last one is that the force is monitored by attaching the probe to a variable cantilever which acts as a spring and measuring the bending or deflection of the cantilever. This is the last point is an important term for understanding AFM that in case of AFM the probe or tip is mounted on the piezoelectric material and in general, the piezoelectric material is cantilever, and if it is cantilever, then it's simply uh, working on the principle of the deviation, principle of the spring, and it gives the information that even if a very small deflection observed in the cantilever, it gives some information about the sample. The larger the cantilever deflection, the higher the force that will experience by the probe. It's very easy to understand that. If reflection in the probe is higher or reflection in the cantilever is higher, it means there is a strong force acting on the probe and in result it deviates. So if it is the cantilever and if we apply a large force, then the deflection is more. And the more deviation means more force is expelled by probe and that force calculation may give some idea about the surface. Most instruments today use an optical method to measure the cantilever reflection with high resolution. When I say the optical method means I am using a laser source or light source to understand, to explain the deviation observed for the material. So here the laser beam is focused on the free end of the cantilever and the position of reflected beam is detected by position sensitive detector that I will show by the diagram and that position sensitive detector are known as photodiodes. AFM cantilevers and props are typically made of silicon or silicon nitride by microfabrication techniques. 
This is schematic of the of an air gun. This is the laser. This is the cantilever. This is the probe which is mounted on the cantilever, and this is the sample. So by just scanning the complete surface, we we'll try to understand. We we'll try to get the information about the surface of the sample, and at every moment, whatever force accelerates between the force that probe and sample will produce some deviation, some deflection in the cantilever and that deflection is measured by the laser which strikes to the sample and it goes and detected by the photodiode or photosensitive photodiode. Now, what is the basic working principle of the AFM? AFM is a flexible cantilever which is approximately 100 micrometer long, 10 micrometer width and 1 micrometer in height attached to a piezo drive, piezo drive which is simply uh, what is a um, conversing term which convert to one energy form into another. A tip is mounted on the cantilever which can be brought too close to the central surface for cantilever. It is a well known emission just like what we discussed in case of also in case of uh, uh, spring where f is equal to minus k. Similarly, for the cantilever we use an equation which is f is equal to k dot del z where k is a constant and the next one is the delta z which is the deviation or displacement observed for the cantilever. Remember, K is the term which is equivalent to what is a resonance frequency in case of spring and this K defines the resonance frequency of the system. Now when we say the force is changing when the cantilever is moved or cantilever is displaced, in that case the equation of force may be written as F is equal to F0 plus del F by del Z dot del Z. This term del F del Z is known as force gradient. Here we are talking about a mechanical forces. So this is the mechanical force gradient. In result, if I rewrite the equation, because F0, which we write in last part, sorry, F0 over here, I will write like F0 is equal to F minus this term, and F is K dot delta Z in the last equation. Here, F is equal to K dot delta Z. So when we substitute the equation, the term which containing K is changed from K to K minus delta by delta Z. And if this term is changed, it means or this term is modified, it means the resonance frequency of the system is changed or resonance frequency of the cantilever is also changed. Because the natural frequency is given by square root of k by m, but in presence of force gradient, now it is modified as root of k minus delta by del z upon m. Thus the effective spring constant k changes in the presence of gradient. The resonant frequency also correspondingly changes as omega r is equal to root of, as I already explained. The resonant frequency is used to control the tip sample interaction because when we say it is having some resonant frequency or frequency it means it oscillates. AFM tape in close vicinity of sample surface expresses a repulsive force which results into minute amount of bending of the cantilever. A beam is directed on the back of the cantilever which after reflection passes through the position sensitive detector small reflection caused by the tip sample interaction are recorded by position sensitive photodiodes and by rusting the probe on sample surface and measuring the cantilever reflection surface image is obtained. It's very easy what we discussed earlier is when the cantilever is scanned on the surface the <coughs> laser beam is focused on the cantilever and any deflection now observed in the cantilever is reflected in the uh, laser which is reflected to photosensitive diode and photosensitive photodiode where we collect the information and get the complete structure of this. The AFM can be operated in three different modes. The first one is the contact mode, second one is the non-contact mode and tapping mode. When we say it is in contact mode, means we are looking or we are looking for something which is related to repulsive force where it is in case of non-contact mode the probe is sufficiently at some distance of uh, maybe few nanometers and in the mode which is the combination of contact and non-contact mode. When I say contact mode, in this case it is in contact with the sample surface and we are almost forced into it. However, due to repulsive interaction between the electron charge the of the tip atom and that of surface atom, the tip is repelled by which bends the cantilever and deviate the direction of laser beams. The principle remains that nothing is changed. The probe is forced into the sample in result. The probe is prepared by the sample and in result there is some deviation observed in the cantilever and that deflection or deviation is reflected by the laser beam. 
In this mode, the interaction due to the first term on the right hand side of the force equation remains due to very small value of r, the distance between two atoms. This I already explained that if distances are small, then repulsive forces are omitting. The main disadvantage of this mode is that thick or sample can be damaged due to the forcing object into sample, especially polymer or other materials. The other one is non contact mode where we talk about the attractive force when tip is not in contact with the sample. In that case, we we'll have the non contact mode. In non contact mode, tip or prong moves at a small distance away from the sample surface. Therefore, it cannot damage the sample. In this mode, the second term of right hand side is the attractive force is dominating. Force equation dominates. This term arises due to the polarization of interacting atoms and due to dipole dipole interaction on two atoms. Third and last, the tapping mode. Tapping mode is the combination of contact and non contact. As I said, it is the combination of two modes, means contact as well as non contact mode. The resolution in the contact mode is higher than that due to the non contact mode because in contact mode, the interaction between tip and surface atom is much more sensitive to the distance as compared to that in non contact mode. <coughs> With tapping mode, the high resolution advantage of contact mode and non destructiveness of non contact mode are achieved. Means one gives the maximum information and second one makes us safe use of the, uh, the tips. So in this end, I'll get the complete information about the sample and on the larger space. The tip is meant to oscillate in magnitude of surface at a distance of approximately 50 nanometer in such a way that it nearly touches the sample during its cycle of oscillations. And tapping mode is simple and robust to use. This is all about the AFM and uh, AFM, which is the atomic force microscopy, are having various uh, members or the various types of the scanning probe microscopy, like AFM, which we already discussed. In next time, we will talk about the EFM, electrostatic force microscope, means the force, the physical force which we are talking about here is replaced by the electrostatic force. Electrostatic force modulation microscopy, magnetic force microscopy, then scanning, turning microscopy, SPM and SSPM. These are the different classifications or different types of the SPM. So we will discuss these things in the next class. Okay.